What a life to be a plant. If I was to be a plant, I would be a Venus flytrap. Just because I think they're cool. Hi, I'm Steve from 1233D. Today, we shall be doing the Coreality High versus the Anycubic Cobra 3. Stay tuned. So, for those of you who follow the channel, we have done independent reviews of both of these machines. We did this one quite a while ago. If you want to watch that video back, the link will be in the description. And with the Coreality High, likewise, we've done exactly the same. So if you haven't seen that video yet and you want to check that one out on its own, please see the link in the description. We've had we've had the Cobra 3 for quite some time. We've put it for its paces. We've printed on it daily and really, really tested it to its maximum capabilities. The Crowley High, we haven't had as long, but needless to say, we have still given it a fair amount of testing. We've run quite a few prints through it and overall been quite impressed with both machines. So we thought we would do a side-by-side -side comparison to let you guys at home make an informed decision which one would be best for you. So I shall start off with the key stats for the Cobra 3. So, I will read from a sheet because there's too many for you to remember all of them off by heart. We have a build volume of 250mm by 250mm by 260mm on the Z. We have a maximum print speed of 600mm per second. Typical print speed though that we recommend is 300mm per second. This to give you optimal quality and to make sure that you don't prematurely wear out your components on your machine not good maximum nozzle temperature for the cobra 3 is 300 degrees and we have a maximum hot heated bed temperature of 110 degrees the machine also has a built-in filament runout sensor in the extruder and we boast an all metal hot end all steel extruder gears along with the capability to print up to eight colors with the ace units you have four colors per unit you could have two ace units connected to this machine so you are good for that now since this machine was released it was released only for use with any cubic slicer there are now working profiles for this machine on orca slicer so if you are more au fait with orca then you will be pleased to know that this is preset in the profiles add paint do all your things slice the file print golden next i shall move over to the creality high the build volume for the high is slightly larger than the cobra 3 at 260 by 260 by 300 so slightly larger typical print speed for this machine maximum speed 500 millimeters a second and recommended print speed of 300 millimeters a second again same as the cobra but the cobra does boast slightly higher top speed so if speed matters the cobra is one up if size matters the high is the one to go for we have a maximum nozzle temperature on this machine of 300 degrees c the heat bed on the high will reach 100 degrees the cobra has 10 degrees on it ultimately will that make a difference to you guys at home i don't know you're going to need to put this in an enclosure if you want to print anything on it that's going to take up to 110 degrees on the bed so you know if you're not printing with abs asa pc or whatever i don't think those temperatures really matter because if you're printing with pla you're going to be using 60 ish the currently high also has a built-in filament runout sensor and also has an all metal hot end the same as the cobra 3 along with steel extruder gears so both of these machines will print pretty much with anything that's abrasive so carbon fiber fluorescent glow in the dark some of the more coarse wood filaments etc not a problem this is where the high comes into its own so with a high you could print up to 16 colors twice as many as the cobra 3 but that will mean you need four of the cfs units the plus side to that is they all plug straight into the buffer that has three empty tube slots so connecting four of these units to this machine is not a problem at all we've also checked and orca the busy busy guys down there have also created a profile for the Corelli high so i know to some people 
they were saying, what difference does it make? It, it doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. If this is your first printer, either one of these, you can use the default slices. However, that being said, the more experienced you get, the more functionality you want, the more tunability you'll want, and you want to mess with things. And everybody at the moment, go-to slicer is Orca. They all swear by Orca because it's very, very feature rich. It's very, very well worked on. It's constantly being updated and new features being added. And the guys that actually work behind the scenes at Orca forever tuning, making profiles. So that saves you, the user, a whole ton of work because pretty much are the days gone where we used to have to sit there and manually calibrate E steps, Z offsets, and all of that kind of thing even down to the filament profiles. They're exceptionally good starting points now. If you just want to load in some filament, put it in Orca, slice it, print it. You might have to make some very, very minor adjustments, but on the whole, they are really, really set up to be quite user-friendly, ready to go. And as I said, give you a lot of extra features that the other default slices like Creality Print or any cubic slicer, I think that, that slicer has changed. I will put a graphic on screen reminding people what the actual official slicer is for Anycubic. They, they did change it. Anycubic actually have two slicers. The base Anycubic slicer has a simple UI and allows you to control the printer remotely. Anycubic slicer next is an open source slicer based on Orca. We'll put links to both in the description. Back to Steve. Who are these machines aimed at? Tricky one, really. I would say anybody and everybody. They are both capable of producing high quality prints. They're both capable of producing multicolor. They're both priced at exceptional price points. The Cobra 3 combo comes in at 346 pounds. For under 350 quid, you've got a fully capable multicolor printing platform. The high, slightly more expensive, coming in at £409 at the time of recording. You know, for under 500 quid, you're getting a decent amount of kit for the money. This is a little bit more expensive because it's a little bit bigger than the Cobra. Build quality, components and everything else. Both machines look aesthetically pleasing. They're quite polished and refined. The Cobra 3 has a nice colour touchscreen display. The High also has a very responsive touchscreen display. You can't see it because we don't have enough room on the table, so we've had to bury the screen with a CFS unit. But we will put full pictures on screen for you to look at. The frames are nicely finished. The Cobra 3 has quite a lot of metal parts. The brace between the gantry is metal, where on the Creality High, this is like a polycarbonate ejection moulded type part. That said, it's very, very rigid. I mean, there's no flex. High runs on two independent lead screws on the Z-axis, where the Cobra runs on one stepper motor that is belt-driven to the other lead screw. I haven't really noticed that not having two stepper motors on this machine is any great loss. There's not any real slop in the gantry at all, whereas the, the High has two independent stepper motors. I mean, for the size of the gantry, you're not really going to get a lot of slop. Some people would say, well, that's, you know, because the extruder's heavier. They're not, they, they look big, but they're not heavy. And for the limited amount of movement and travel that they're going to make, I, I've not seen any ill effects, shall I say. Both machines operate on the beds on a very, very similar sort of drive system. On the Creality High, you've got a slightly wider rail on the bottom where the bed slides up and down on it on smooth rods with like a metal V-wheel bearing runner. Cobra 3 Combo has a slightly narrower mount for the bottom and then the smooth rods down the side with the same steel metal ball bearing V-wheels again. Both are belt driven, but ultimately, I mean, there's no, there's no noticeable flex. The Cobra platform looks thinner than the Creality, but in real terms it isn't. The plastic around it is just a fascia for aesthetics, nothing nothing more, it's not structural. And that will probably bring me along to locating the bed. So both machines come with flexible spring steel sheets. On the high, you literally just locate it on the back of the bed. There's little two little plastic 90 degree locating mouldings. On the Cobra, you have here where the nozzle brush is, the build plate has a cutout. And again, you slide it back, you locate it on the cutout, drop it into place. That system is easier to line up than that system because you can get the plate slightly off kilter, which won't affect your prints in any way, but if you want it perfectly in line, this one 
has the slight edge. Both machines have like a silicon cl nozzle cleaning brush at the back of the build plate. This isn't attached to the build plate in any way. It is actually on the print platform, the heated bed. These are consumable parts and you can buy replacements should you need them if the nozzle wears them out. Next up, I, I suppose I should really mention the color change units. The Ace, when that first came out, we were quite impressed with it. Any Cubic have introduced an actual dryer into their unit so the color change unit also doubles up as a filament dryer it works really well it saves you having a desktop filament dryer or pre-drying your filament by other means some people use designated filament dryer some people use a microwave some people use their oven i think i have read in a couple of instances People have even adopted the use of air fryers, which I would not recommend putting your PLA into an air fryer to dry. The CFS unit for the Creality High does not have the inbuilt filament dryer. It has the silica bead desiccant slots, the same as the Cobra has. That's how you would dry your filament in there. So the beads basically absorb the moisture that is generated from the filament as it is in the sealed unit. The plus side to that unit is on the screen when it's powered on you do actually have a relative humidity reading along with an internal temperature reading for the CFS unit whereas on the ACE unit you don't have any display. It does actually tell you on the UI what the relative humidity is inside the ACE unit. Again swings and roundabouts it depends what you want. I mean the screen does nothing really it tells you what the humidity is inside. So it gives you a visual representation. So, in summary, which one would I choose? I can't really make that decision, to be fair. I guess the underlying factors would come down to what brand you're most familiar with. I mean, there's certain things about the Cobra 3 that when we first looked at it, I think they could have done a little bit better, i.e. the four PTFE tubes coming into the extruder, whereas on the high, you've just got a nice tidy one. Just makes it a little bit more free-flowing and easy to use. They could have put a buffer on it that have the four tubes go into the buffer and then one tube out. I mean, ultimately, for the price, the machine works. It works very well. It produces really good quality prints. I should really mention print times, waste, all of that type of thing, because I know that that's a big one for a lot of users, and rightly so. I mean, filament costs money. The, the less waste we can produce with a print, the better. But needless to say, I'm sorry to tell you guys, these produce as much waste as any other printer that uses multicolour printing, apart from those that use multiple tool heads. Again, the age old saying, the extruder needs to purge the previous filament from the nozzle to get the new colour through so that you don't have any dirty colour changes. And it'll do this in two ways. It purges the filament through the nozzle producing poops and it was also then purge the nozzle by printing a purge tower on the build plate. Both machines do that. Both machines produce the same amount of waste and both machines would probably take round about the same time to print the same items. Now we will print two identical models on both of these machines and we will post the results for each one with time and whatever else on screen just so that you can see and obviously the color change units both use similar principles i mean you don't have to print multicolor you can load up with multiple same color spools or whatever and run them consecutively to use up every bit of filament from each spool both machines are capable of doing that so i think that really concludes the verses so if you would like to know any further information or you have any questions or you would like to know anything else about either of these machines or any other machine that you may fancy please drop us a comment or alternatively fire me an email the link for that will be in the description i hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative and maybe it's helped to make your decision easier for you please do not forget to like subscribe if you really want to share and we will see you on the next one bye bye for now as always we aim to have the most competitive 3d printer prices on the market if you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price also if you're watching from outside the uk check the description for links to our european 123 3d sister stores